Special Contrast Procedures 1 with Brandy Jones. Urinary Studies, Intravenous Urography, which is IVU, used to be called IVP, which is Intravenous Pyelography. We have Hypertensive Intravenous Urogram, Retrograde Urography, Retrograde Urethrography, Retrograde Cystography, Cystogram, Voiding Cystourethrogram, BCUG, and a Chain Cystogram, all that we're going to talk about in this PowerPoint today. Intravenous urography, which used to be intravenous pilogram. You may hear these two interchanged. What is an IVU? IVU is a radiographic examination of the urinary system performed with intravenous IV contrast medium. IVU is done to provide much more information or detail about the urinary system than a plain abdominal radiograph. IVU also demonstrates general function of the urinary tract. Three purposes of the IVU. One is to visualize the collecting portion of the urinary system. Two, assess the functional ability of the kidneys. Three, evaluate the urinary system for pathology or anatomic anomalies. Intravenous urogram. X-rays are to be taken to track the movement of the contrast dye. Basic imaging protocol is the following. A scout, which is a KUB, a nephrogram, which is a individual picture of the kidneys, a five minute KUB, a 15 minute KUB, 20 minute obliques, RPO and LPO, a final KUB, which is a post void. More x-rays may be needed to clearly show the site of any obstruction if the radiologist or physician asks. Commonly, a compression device may be placed across the lower abdomen this is not painful and it helps to provide good quality pictures of the kidneys. You may also use the Trendelenburg. Now, how is the IVU done? The patient lays down on an x-ray table after initial x-ray is taken, which is the scout of the kidneys and bladder area. A contrast is injected into a vein in the back of a hand usually or through the arm. The dye passes through the bloodstream into the kidneys, fills the collecting system, within the kidneys and then passes through the main tube of the bladder, see the ureter. A series of x-rays will be taken during this procedure. What is IVU used for? IVU is the most common kidney x-ray and is used to investigate a wide range of problems such as hematuria, pain in the kidney, suspected kidney stones or obstruction, reoccurrent infection of the bladder or kidney, suspected congenital anomalies, to look for urinary tract damage following an abdominal injury. Contraindications, allergies to contrast, possibly pregnant or pregnant, diabetes, severe hepatic or re renal disease, congestive heart failure, renal failure or anuria, sickle cell anemia, and multiple myeloma. Special population. So pediatrics are very sensitive to change in their diet, fluid intake, and iodinated contrast media. So they must be carefully monitored, scheduled early in the day, um, and an alternative exam would be an ultrasound. Geriatrics uh, may be affected negatively by changes in the diet, fluid intake, and iodinated contrast as well. They must be questions about diabetes and if they take glucophage. Special population, bariatric. Technical factors may need to be increased to penetrate the adipose tissue. You may need additional senses moving the patient and you may need to adjust the paniculus to visualize the bladder. So this means you'll have to ask them to take that apron of fat hanging over their pelvis area and pull it up out of the way. Digital imaging. Considerations for all urographic procedures similar to abdomen projections include close collimation, accurate centering of the CR to the body part, optimal exposure expect factors, ALARA principle, post-processing evaluation of exposure indicators. 
clinical indications, benign prostatic hyperplasia, more commonly called BPH, uh, bladder calculi, bladder carcinoma, cystitis, renal or urethral ca calculi, a renal failure, renal hypertension, renal obstruction, renal cell carcinoma, congenital anomalies, ectopic and horseshoe kidneys, and renal agenesis, Bright's disease, hydronephrosis, polycystic kidney disease, bladder pathology, diverticula, fistula, vesicourethral reflux, unknown hematuria, UTI, and trauma. Patient prep. The day before the exam, a light evening meal, bowel cleansing laxative to reduce bowel gas and fecal materials in the abdomen, and PO after midnight, which is usually a minimum of eight hours. Patient prep the day of exam. The patient should void just prior to the exam for two reasons. No, one, the bladder is too full and could rupture, especially if compression is applied early in the examination. Two, urine that is already present in the bladder can dilute the contrast media. Consent forms, sign and history forms filled out accurately. Blood work, BUN and creatinine levels, Explanation of the procedure to the patient and the parent if a patient is under age. Have patient remove clothes and change in a hospital gown with the opening in the back. Females include bra. Have all information and equipment supplies set and ready to use. Supplies. Contrast media. Gloves, non-sterile. Connection tube. Paper tape. Alcohol pads. 260 cc syringes, the drug box, IV needles or kits like butterfly and or needleless IV system, oxygen and suction devices in working order. The drug box should contain epinephrine and or Benadryl. Make sure you have the emergency cart or know where exactly where it is, suction, oxygen, IV needles, 18, 20, and 22 gauge available. This is a picture of all the supplies we have just named to you uh, that you will need for um, doing the IVU. The next step is to take a scalp. You want to do the scalp before you place the IV in the patient. Um, for uh, scalp radiograph can be taken before the procedure for, for following reasons to verify the patient prep. You want to make sure you have no gas or bowel patterns that are going to obstruct the kidneys, ureter, or bladder where you need to be able to see. Um, to determine whether the exposure factors are acceptable. You don't want anything too light or too dark. Do you need to be able to visualize the kidney, ureters, and bladder? Um, to verify positioning, you need to make sure you're on point. You do not have time for repeats. This is a time study. Uh, to detect any abnormal calcifications. Um, and then you'll show your scalp radiograph to your radiologist, and then you can place your IV in and move forth from there. This is a regular KUB, AP, usually lengthwise 14 by 17 with the grid and the table, um, perpendicular to the IR at the level of the iliac crest and mid-sagittal plane. I don't want to read all of this because you guys have already learned abdomen, but all the information is here for you. Routine images after the scalp radiograph. When the injection of the contrast is made, the exact start time and the length of the ejection should be noted. Please be sure you have to place your appropriate marker and the time markers placed on the IR to record the time of exposure. The patient does not have to change the position from the KUB projection until the 20 minute obliques. So you wanna to try to keep, encourage them to stay still. One minute KUB, or taken immediately after the completion of injection to capture the early stages of uh, entry of the contrast media into the collecting system demonstrates the nephron stages of the kidney. One minute KUB AP should be the same as your scalp, except for now you'll start to see a little bit of contrast coming through to the kidneys. Nephrogram. One minute post injection, timing is critical. It's the nephron phase, it's a blush phase of the renal parenchyma. 
The blush phase results from contrast filling the mini nephrons, but not yet coll the collecting tubules. If uteric compression is used, this phase may last up to five minutes in a normal kidney. So let's talk about when a nephrogram taken during an IVU and the renal parenchyma is poorly visualized, but the calyces are contrast enhanced. What's the most likely reason for this radiographic outcome? Anybody? So the exposure would not be taken soon enough following injection. So the timing is very critical. Nephrotomogram. Most common imaging obtained for the nephron phase is a tomographic nephrogram performed with a tomogram device attached to the x-ray table and machine. Three separate focal levels are taken. A scout is usually preferred when you take your KB scout. <clears throat> the IR is 10 by 12 or 11 by 14 crosswise. The central ray is halfway between the iliac crest and the xiphoid process, unless a scout shows differently. How to find the fulcrum level. Don't make any abnormal calipers from front to back over the kidney area. Use this number and divide it by three. Set the fulcrum at that number to first to perform as long as it is good positioning, we will perform the other two fulcrum levels, one below that number and one above that number to get your three levels. For example, measure your patient. Let's say the patient measures 24 centimeters using your calipers. To find the fulcrum level, divide by three and you will get eight centimeters. Show the radiologist and make sure you are centered to your 10 by 12, 11 by 14 crosswise, and the level is good. Kidneys will be well visualized. Additional fulcrum levels. You will add a level to see more of the upper poles of the kidneys. You will decrease the level to see the lower poles of the kidneys. Therefore, levels 7, 8, and 9 should be performed when you are injecting contrast for the one-minute tomogram. Nephrogram or nephrotomogram, depending on what equipment you have, this is which one you'll use. There's the central ray evaluation criteria and additional information you will need to know. Next is a five minute KUB. We've already discussed your, what your KUB is. All the information would be here. This is what it would look like for your five minute KUB. You start to see the contrast coming in to the kidneys and the renal calyces and coming down to the ureters. You will perform a 10 to 15 minute KUB. For the 10 to 15 minute KUB, adequate distension of the pelvic calvicial system is seen. Use of compression band is applied around the patient's abdomen if the radiologist requests or put a patient in Trellenberg position if you need help to descend this pelvic calcial area. Release when the radiologist is satisfied. However, you'll start to see them start to go down into the ureters, as you can see on this image here. 20 minute obliques. At this point, we are going to change our positioning slightly. So we're going to perform an RPO and LPO for 20 minute obliques. You're going to provide a different view of the kidneys and project the ureters away from the spine to be visualized. So let's talk about a radiograph of the LPO oblique position taken during an IVU reveals the right kidney is foreshortened and superimposed over the spine. What must the technologist do to correct this error during the repeat exposure? You will need to decrease your rotation. Twenty minute abdominal obliques, RPO and LPO. Um, this is a time study, so you want to perform them pretty swiftly. Uh, you don't want to dilly dally. You are going to be looking at the elevated kidney and the downside ureter. Usually, the degree of, li of liquidity is about thirty degrees. Um, so you want to make sure you can clearly see your elevated kidney and your downside ureter. Otherwise, you might have to decrease or increase your rotation of your patient. Uh, the central ray is perpendicular to the IR at the level of the iliac crest and the vertebral column. There's other information here which you guys can look at and read. It's also in your Von Traegers. 
After all of that, um, you have a post void, but you want to make sure your radiologist is satisfied with all your images before you um, ask them to void. Maybe they need other additional bladder views or something of the sort or kidney views, delayed images of, or anything. But here is your post KUB, it's the same as your scalp. All right, shield appropriately. Shielding, do not obscure the required anatomy. So if we have a female, obviously we can't cover her female gonads. We may have to put it just below the pelvis um, or above the chest area. Uh, you do not want to cover the kidneys, ureter, and bladder and obscure any information. This is important with the contrast. Know your anatomy. What's A through G? A is your minor calyces. B is your major calyces. C is the renal pelvis. D is your ureter or pelvic junction. E is your, your proximal ureter. F is your distal ureter. G is your bladder, your urinary bladder. Alternatives to the routine, a post-release or spill, KUB taken post-compression to assess for asymmetric renal function. Compression usually starts after the five-minute KUB and release just before the 15-minute KUB. If you're asked to take an erect image, the history of prolapsed bladder or enlarged prostate gland um, may place the patient in the erect position before voiding to confirm these conditions. A delayed uh, image with urinary calculi feeling that the ureter may be slow. A delay on one to two hours basis may be required, um, sometimes a few minutes. Depends on your radiologist and what's going on with your patient. Complete the IVU as normal. A post void with a prone or erect delayed image. A hyperintensive intravenous urogram. A hyperintensive intravenous urogram is performed on patients with high blood pressure, hypertension. It determines if the kidneys are the cause of the high blood pressure. Much shorter time between the films compared to an IVU. Films start immediately. So setup and everything else would be exactly the same as an IVU. However, your timing of your films are going to change. It's going to be a one, two, and three minute radiograph, and they may continue every 30 seconds after that. The radiologist will instruct you on the time frame of the films. Um, time begins at the, at the injection. Not a common procedure today, but may be done um, if other modalities are not available. Retrograde urography. Retrograde urography. In retrograde urography, a radiopaque dye is injected directly through a scope or catheter passed through the bladder and into the ureter. This technique provides a good image of the bladder, ureters, and renal pelvis when intravenous urography has not been successful. Retrograde urography is also useful in investigating an obstruction of the ureter. Advantage is less chance of an allergic reaction. Disadvantages include the risk of infections and the need for anesthesia. An advantage of retrograde urography over IVU is there is less chance of an allergic reaction than contrast. Just remember that. Retrograde urography. Contrast is introduced retrograde backwards against the flow into the pelvic cavity seal system via a catheterization by a urologist performed to, uh, by, to locate urinary calculi or other obstructions performed less frequently today because of CT. The patient is placed on a combination assisto-radiographic table with a dedicated x-ray tube or a C-arm can be used in the OR. Retrograde urography. Placed in a modified lithotomy position, both legs and stirrups, then draped with sterile drapes. The urologist is at the bottom of the table between the stirrups. The cystoscope is inserted through the urethra into the bladder. Usually this can be seen on a video monitor in the room. A catheter is inserted into the ureter. Ideally, the tip is placed at the level of the renal pelvis. You may take your first image. A scalp may be taken here if a C-arm is a quick shot and save it. The second image is a common retrograde urographic series in a pilogram. 
injects five milliliters of contrast, and you want to take an image and save it. <clears throat> your third image is your readogram. Head is head end of the table may be elevated. The catheter usually visualizes the renal pelvis, and the contrast is filled with major and minor calyces. Ureter is shown as the catheter is withdrawn. Therefore, it is called a ureterogram. Retrograde urography. Here are the examples A, B, and C of the images. Retrograde urethrography. Retrograde urethrography involves the use of x-ray images to provide visualization of structural problems or injuries to the urethra. Retrograde urethrography is used in combination with doctors' observation and other tests to establish a diagnosis for individuals, almost exclusively on men who may have structural problems with the urethra. Retrograde urethrography performed on males for trauma or obstruction of the urethra, performed usually in the OR, a 30-degree RPO position with centering over the symphysis pubis. A catheter is inserted into the distal urethra and contrast is injected. A contrast must fill the entire urethra with multiple exposures. If multiple films are taken, be sure they are numbered in sequence so the radiologist can read them correctly. Ideally, urethra is superimposed over soft tissues of the right thigh. Positioning presents bony structures from superimposing except for the lower pelvis and proximal femur. So if a male patient comes to the radiology department for voiding their urethrogram, which of the following projections and or positions would be performed for this procedure? Yes, a 30 degree RPO of your male patients. Retrograde cystography. Retrograde cystography is a non-functional radiographic exam of the bladder performed with contrast injected via ure the urethral catheter. A non-function because it is retrograde against the flow. Performed when the radiology department or in the OR, the bladder should be empty prior to the exam. Trauma. After catheterization, the bladder can be drained for the patient. The bladder is filled with contrast by gravity. After the bladder is full, it may require 150 to 500 milliliters. Images may be taken. Um, they are AP with a 15 degree caudal angle and bilateral posterior obliques. Retrograde cystography. Cystogram. What is a cystogram? A radiographic examination of the urinary bladder by injecting contrast media into the bladder through a catheter in the urethra. Used to evaluate for trauma, tumors, cystitis, and calculi. Cystography room setup. You will need sheets, towels, some chucks placed under the patient um, for easier cleanup of urine if, or if the contrast is expelled. Supplies. Ivy pole, contrast, paper tape, an IV set with spike, blunt tip needle, a three-way stopcock, a Christmas tree adapter, and or additional adapter that would fit catheter adult for your adult or a feeding tube for your pediatric patient. How to hook it all up. Place the bottle of contrast upside down hanging from the IV pole. Gravity aids in the flow of contrast. Used to fill the bladder may require 150 to 500 milliliters. Um, usually we use Conray 43, but they may be other additional um, contrasts out there. Um, use your IV set with spike. Contrast is accessed with the spike. The flow of contrast is controlled by the roller clamp. Secondary clamp is used to start and stop the flow. End tubing connects to the patient's catheter. 5 cc or 10 cc syringe for the catheter balloon inflation. Paper tape used to hold the catheter in place so that accidental removal does not occur. After setup, you may need some other supplies. These supplies would be for your physician, betadine and or alcohol, some two by two um, gauze, sterile gloves, sterile drape, lubricant, a sterile cup, and a biohazard bag with labels for the patient. Putting it all together. 
sterile gloves. Sterile gloves may be worn by the nurse during catheterization to prevent infection. A sterile drape is used over the patient to prevent infection from the, the area surrounding the sterile site. A catheter for an adult or a feeding tube for the pediatric uh, contrast will flow through the catheter or feeding tube. A lubricant is used to reduce friction while the catheter is being inserted. Betadine or alcohol is used for sterilization before you would catheterize eyes. And a sterile cup, sometimes uh, urine is sent for a sample and that's where your biohazard bag and patient labels will also be needed. History and consent forms. Uh, here is an example of the contract media history form that needs to be filled out. This is how you interview the patient and write your answers down. And then we have the consent um, for the patient as well. And I will have examples of these when we do our mock um, labs so you guys can practice and read through these once on your own. Procedures. Prepare the x-ray with the sheet or a pillow for the patient. Put all necessary supplies as well as consent forms for the patient to review and sign. Put the patient info into the computer and set the control panel. Have the patient empty bladder prior to catheterization. Once you have all the supplies you need and the patient has arrived, explain the procedure and introduce them to the staff that will assist you in the procedure. The catheter will be tipped by the imaging nurse. Contrast will be administered by a gravitational drip. It should never be injected or forced into the bladder. It could rupture. The contrast um, is an iodine prep preparation of 18 to 30%. Conray 43 is the most common used. However, there are others out there. It just depends on your site. The bladder should be filled with contrast anywhere from 150 to 500 milliliters. Uh, the various radiographs are taken depending on the radiologist. When the examination is finished, the bladder is drained using gravity and the catheter may be carefully removed. Images. If requested by the radiologist, the following are the routine overhead radiographs that will need to be taken. An AP with a 10 to 15 caudal angle centering two inches above the symphysis pubis and mid-sagittal plane. Both obliques, RPO and LPO, centering two inches above the symphysis and two inch medial to the ASIS um, of the upside. And lateral is optional, um, centering two inches above the symphysis and two inches posterior. Histogram. Here is a summary of everything for your um, book that you will need. So you have your room set up, supplies, your contrast, um, how to set up the images you may need. Histogram images. Here's the AP with a 10 to 15 degree angle, your RPO, and a left lateral optional image. Supplies for catheter insertion. Instagram made by Rachel Flannery, Kishi Smiths, Danny um, Zachirka from class and of 2022 when I they had to do the their spike. project. Make sure that the roller is down so no contrast leaks down and makes a mess. And then we spike our bottle. After clamping the catheter, we attach the Christmas tree to our IV tubing. And then we attach our tubing to the catheter. <laughs> Blood tip needle. Tubing. Three-way stopcock. <laughs> attach 60 cc syringe to three-way stopcock. Now we're ready to bring the patient in. Bring in the patient. Consent the patient. Transfer patient to the table. First we clamp our catheter and then we take the bag off and attach our Christmas tree tubing to our contrast. Next, we call Dr. Nephron. 
Dr. Nefron, at your service. Let's get started. Inject the contrast. <laughs> Fluoroing. Take some overhead films. Drain the contrast. Ma'am, you can use the bathroom and you'll be on your way. Your bladder is ruptured. <laughs> Voiding cystic urethrogram, also known as VCUG. Voiding cystic urethrogram, or cystourethrography, um, is a functional study of the bladder and urethra. Uh, voiding cystic urethrogram is a procedure to image the bladder and urethra during urination. Usually, the urinary bladder is not well seen on conventional x rays. In this examination, a contrast medium is introduced into the bladder to improve visualization. X ray images are taken in various positions with the bladder full of contrast and while the bladder is being emptied. Clinical indications uh, vesicourethral reflux, chronic urinary tract infections, urinary retention, incontinence hydronephrosis, um, suspe suspected bladder trauma or rupture, um, ureterocele, contraindications, um, untreated UTI or sensitivity to the contrast, ECUG setup, you'll need a pillowcase, some sheets, some towels, some chalks for your patient. Other supplies that you will need are betadine, a sterile cup, the bio bag, four two by two gauze, sponges, tape, 60cc syringe, an IV pole, a light source, contrast, 10cc syringe, a blunt tip needle, a three-way stopcock, IV tubing, a catheter for adults, or a feeding tube for infants. Start by assembling a 60cc syringe, a three-way stopcock, extension tubing, and a blunt, blunt tip fill needle, um, as seen in picture A, with the blue background. Hang the contrast bottle upside down on the IV pole as seen in picture B. Spike the contrast bottle with the IV set spike tubing and the needle set up from picture A. Patient preparation. Um, always check two forms of ID, name and date of birth. Explain the procedure, obtain informed consent. No special preparation is needed as far as eat and drink as usual. Uh, the patient may be asked to take an antibiotic medication before or after the test. It's up to the physician. The test would not be done if the person is having urinary tract infection, so let the hospital know if you or your child have any signs of infection. Pregnant women should not have the test, so let your hospital know if you may be pregnant. Should uh, also be advised the hospital if you're breastfeeding, they will let you know whether precautions need to be taken. Let the hospital know if you are allergic to contrast. Procedure. The catheter or feeding tube is inserted into the urethra by a nurse and contrast is injected into the bladder. While the bladder is being distended with contrast, the radiologist uses a fluoroscope to check for retention, ureterocele, or any other suspected pathology. Once the bladder is filled to its maximum capacity, the patient is asked to void on a radiologist uses fluoro to look for reflux as, um, of the contrast. Overheads may be requested afterwards. Images that may be taken during the exam, you will have a scalp KUB before you even started the procedure, an AP with partially filled bladder, some voiding shots, usually done under fluoro, um, some different phases of voiding. Males um, are usually placed in an RPO at 30 degrees. Females are usually AP. Um, sometimes you have a post void KUB um, and include um, some KUB obliques or reflux if suspected under fluoro. Here is your scalp KUB information. Again, I know you guys have new, learned all this. This is just review for you guys. A partially filled bladder KUB. This is the information you would need for that image. Oblique RPO for males, 10 by 12 lengthwise. The patient is supine and then oblique the body 30 degrees into an RPO, superimpose the urethra over the right thigh, 
uh, the central ray is perpendicular to the IR at the level of the symphysis pubis and mid-sagittal plane. AP for females, uh, the patient is in an AP supine KV position. Um, you're going to center your central ray perpendicular to the IR at the level of the symphysis pubis and mid-sagittal plane. Um, collimate down to your IR size. Postvoid would be a regular KUB. The postvoid obliques would be your RPO, LPO, 14 by 17 lengthwise um, obliques. Here are some examples of the images for the VCUG. You have your scalp, the AP KUB, you have your postvoid KUB, you have your voiding images um, of your female and your male and anatomy. A is your distal ureter, B is your bladder, C is the trigone area of the bladder, D is the area of the prostate gland, and E is the urethra. Other modalities. Nuclear medicine. Nuclear scans rely on radiation given off by certain atoms. Chemicals containing such atoms are injected into the bloodstream. They reach the kidneys where images are constructed by measuring the radiation emitted. Ultrasound. Ultrasound is a quick, safe, simple, and inexpensive way to obtain views of internal organs. Although less detailed than other methods, it may be sufficient. This is a non-invasive study. CT. CT uses radiation and collects information in the computer in such a way that three-dimensional images can be constructed, eliminating interference from nearby structures. Use of CT for renal studies has increased and in nearly replacing the IVU study. MRI uses magnetic fields and radio frequency signals instead of radiation to create computerized images. This form of energy is entirely safe as long as the patient has no metal on board. The technique is far more versatile than CT scanning. It is quite expensive though. Everybody, you have reached the end.